The one thing my parents did do as I was growing up, my mother always showed me Eucharistic miracles. Like the, she really showed me how Christ is truly present in the Eucharist by showing me that there were bleeding hosts and that when they tested the DNA on them, like she really showed me a few documentaries growing up that that foundation stuck with me. And even though I left my faith in my, I would say late teens, early twenties, I left my faith. When I came back, I came back through Protestantism. It was a Protestant preacher who brought me back to my faith. But when I started hearing anti-Catholic things in those sermons, I remember back to my upbringing of seeing those documentaries on the Eucharist and saying, okay, there's something off here. I definitely know that the Eucharist is the true presence of Jesus. And I need to try to square that. And that's what led me on my search to actually like investigate the claims of Catholicism and which eventually led to my deep conversion. And then eventually I wound up uh, at the traditional Latin mass several years later. So did you, so are you saying that you never really seriously doubted the real presence, even though you kind of were a wayward Catholic for a while? So even when I left the, so I, I can, I will, I was never an atheist, even at my time away from the sacraments, I always believed in God. So it's like when you're away from the sacraments, though, you live as though there is no God, even if you believe there is one. And I think I, I'm sure a lot of people identify with that, right? Like you grow up, you're given this foundation, but then 100%. you want to go, right? Yeah, you go and want to do your own thing. But there was something about knowing that Jesus was truly present in the Eucharist and my parents showing me all these, my parents showed me, uh, they showed me incorruptible saints and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was those things that actually kept me grounded and saying, okay, well, it has to be, if it's even in the times of my highest doubt, it was like, okay, well, if, it, if there is a God, it has to be Catholicism because we're the church of miracles. We really are. We have the greatest miracles of any faith out there and you can't, you can't doubt that. So I definitely never was an atheist and I always knew that it was the Catholic faith that I had to come back to. That, that's a really great, uh, that's a great hope for Catholic parents in our day, you know, just show the kids the miracles. It, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of simple almost because God speaks, God himself is the one catechizing the children right there, like directly sort of thing. Uh, Matthew, you have uh, worked as a catechist for many years Mm -hmm. And I don't know how how many what age group you've mainly devoted yourself to is adults, children, uh, young adults. Um, tell us some of the uh, what are some of the things that you bring to teaching catechumens or various others the faith of the real presence? How do you present it? What are some tips mm -hmm. and, uh, points that you make? So, Anthony, I, I'm really happy to hear what you had to say. Uh, because for me in my work, you know, bringing uh, adults to the faith through my catechismclass.com program. So thankfully, you know, by the grace of God, we've helped really thousands of people enter the church or re rediscover the church or study for their confirmation that put it off for years or children studying for first communion, you know, thousands of those as well. And uh, we do talk a lot about miracles because I think the proof is is there. You know, you can you if you go to the source, like you know, it, we'll t we'll also talk about reason. So reason and miracles. So we'll give you the formulas. You'll understand. You will walk you through. Well, you know what the church is taught using the rationale of St. Thomas Aquinas and the saints. And you can, you can come to understand why this was practiced. We'll go back to the early church. We'll look at historical things in an age appropriate way. And, and that's all good. And I think that that's going to be in the back of your mind and you're not going to lose that, but you have to have the other thing, you know, it's not just an intellectual religion, you live it. So that's why, you know, the Eucharistic miracle of Orvieto, we talk about and Luciano, and we have the, you know, children studying for their first communion. They watch a video on St. Anthony and the mule, you know, and, and understand that we understand how St. Clair drove off the Saracen invaders by carrying the Holy Eucharist in a monstrance. So I want children to see these stories and get inspired by them. But then at the same time, we have them watch a, a documentary on modern Eucharistic miracles, you know, DNA testing, like you talked about. This is not just some, you know, story told over 800 years and we don't really know if it's true. Like, no, it's it's happening right now. So Eucharistic miracles, you talked about incorruptible saints, rosary miracles at Hiroshima and like the list goes on and on. So 
I mean, there's no way Catholicism can be false if it has all of this proof. So that's what I want people to understand. Like yeah. you might want it to be false. You might not want to live by the Christian morality that we have to live by. You might want to try to disprove it, but the evidence is so overwhelming that you must, you must actually say, I would rather believe a lie or I must go ahead and believe this. And if I do, then I'm really going to delve into the catechism. I'm going to understand what the church teaches, but it, it is hand in hand. It's not emotional. You know, it's not a charismatic renewal. He wants you to feel a way, you know, God shows you an actual physical proof because he's real and he yeah. can do it. Mm -hmm. so.